Just the other day, Qualcomm held a pretty big event called the Snapdragon Tech Summit event. And at this event, they announced several big things, but probably the biggest and most important thing for this channel was the announcement of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Of course, this is the sequel, the follow-up to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which powers many of the phones that are probably in the pockets of those of you listening or watching this video. And in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this thread I posted, a series of posts. You can follow me on threads at shanec.irl to stay up to date with all of this stuff even more rapidly. And we're gonna use this to run down many of the most important details about the upcoming Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So just strictly on paper, Qualcomm claims that this brand new chip is gonna be about 30% faster than last year's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, but it's also going to be 20% more efficient. That's exactly what you're looking for, right? More speed costing less energy to create. Now, these improvements in raw horsepower come largely from the fact that this 8-core processor is going to be running at faster clock speeds than last year. Now, it is still, like I said, an 8-core processor. We have two efficiency cores running at 2.3 gigahertz, five performance cores at 3.2 gigahertz, and a prime core, a max performance core, running at 3.3 gigahertz. And yes, that is the fastest clock speed seen yet on a mobile phone. On the GPU side of things, we continue to just get more and more ridiculous with the sorts of graphics that these mobile phones can produce. This brand new Adreno GPU sports real-time accelerated ray tracing as well as global illumination, Snapdragon game super resolution, and HDR gaming at 10-bit color. A lot of this stuff is really, really cool. Maybe you don't know exactly what it is. Ray tracing basically accurately simulates and recreates what light does in real life. Light comes in and it hits things and it scatters and it bounces onto other things. That's what light does. Ray tracing simulates this much, much more accurately. Global illumination is sort of another way of scattering and reflecting light and illuminating things, bouncing light off of other things to illuminate other objects in the world. Again, all this being rendered in real time. Snapdragon Game Super Resolution is really cool because it allows basically a game to be rendered at a lower resolution and then up to a higher resolution while maintaining visual quality. You know what HDR is. This stuff is extremely, extremely impressive. Perhaps in a slightly less exciting territory, there is going to be a new modem, the X75G, and of course it supports all the new stuff, 5G millimeter wave, 5G sub-6 as well. In perfect conditions, they're hoping speeds will reach 10 gigabit per second. Uplink speeds will be 3.5 gigabits per second. Very, very fast. Again, maybe not that exciting. Maybe on the slightly more exciting thing that maybe some of you are getting <laughs> almost bored with, is AI. AI was absolutely the star of this show. They talked about it over and over. And the cool thing about this is they're doing more and more AI tasks on the device itself. Not sending stuff to the cloud, but actually running it on the device. I'm going to show you this video here, which I pulled off of my friend on Twitter, Ian. He has a great YouTube channel of his own. And this video is extremely impressive. What you're seeing here is this image in the middle. It's being expanded and it is using a stable fusion model to create the rest of that photo. And that is happening in real time on the device. This isn't being sent to the cloud like Magic Editor. They're actually doing it locally on the device, which is unbelievable. Now Qualcomm says this sort of thing is possible thanks to a 98% faster Qualcomm Hexagon NPU, NPU being Neural Processing Unit, 40% better performance per watt as well. So this thing is way, way, way better at AI tasks than anything else that we have had so far. Three and a half times the AI performance, apparently. We are getting closer and closer to running all of these sorts of things locally on our phones. Guys, the future is going to be absolutely insane. And luckily, the future is not that far away because this chip has already been produced and there will be phones launching with this chip in it very, very soon. This sort of lends some credibility to the report that I brought the other day that Samsung was leaning super duper heavily into AI stuff with the upcoming S24 line because, of course, this is the system on a chip it is going to be running. It is interesting to think about, though, how will that work 
in regions where maybe they're going to use an Exynos processor? How are these things going to run? Are these features going to be Snapdragon specific or just way slower on the Exynos devices? That's going to be really, really interesting to see. And what will Google do with the Tensor G4? Will they possibly be able to keep up with this sort of stuff as Qualcomm is leaning basically really heavily into what Google was trying to do and potentially drinking their milkshake along the way. Guys, what do you think about all this stuff? Let me know in the comments down below. Remember to subscribe before you do leave, and I will see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.